Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hobby Lodge and in this video I'm going to talk about the Brighton Retro Gaming Market and if you stick with me, we'll open up this surprise bag of retro goodies. <laughs> So, yes, we went to the Brighton Video Gaming Market. It wasn't really a planned trip. Uh, my daughter now goes to Brighton University. So in a trip, I was taking her back down there. Uh, a friend of mine, actually, uh, Marathon Gaming, I'll stick his channel below, uh, he said he was going here today, and I didn't even know it was on. So I looked it up, and it was very close to where Brighton University is. So I thought I'd pop over, take a look, and see what was inside. Um so super easy to get to it is the brighton race course uh, loads of parking super easy to get to via driving um, i don't know too much whether you could get to it early, fairly easy with public transport but brighton is very well known for how good it is with things like public transport even cycling and all those sorts of things so i can't imagine it's very hard at all um so yeah well worth checking out it was three pound entry uh, we were in there just after midday so i think you probably may pay a little bit more to get early access um but midday we turned up third it's three pound uh, and it was um three pound just for adults so anyone under age of 16 i believe is free uh so i had my two youngest sons with me um he of, of which they are 12 12 and 8 oh it's got so many kids it's hard to keep hold of all their ages uh so yeah we went in cost us three quid absolute bargain um i will be showing some footage i didn't take too much footage whilst walking around just a quick bit at the end just to give an idea it wasn't a huge gaming market um but there was an area Area for free gaming so there was you know your nintendo your super nintendo your mega drive all the classics set up for you to have a little play on um, there wasn't too many machines there maybe 10 uh, so as you can imagine you might have to wait your turn to have a little play but it wasn't super busy so when we were there like one o'clock in the afternoon you could easily jump on a machine and have a play uh, there was also a pinball machine there which is really cool uh, and some arcade one-ups um, dotted around the place actually not just in the free play area but also in other areas as well some of the uh, people running booths had one there for you to have a play with so yeah as you walked around all the stuff you'd expect absolutely lots and lots of retro gaming i'm gonna guess probably 15 maybe 20 stalls um but i'm guessing more close towards the 15 stalls there in in total and and they were ranging in sizes and they ranged in what they sold so obviously the majority were retro video games but there were people that they're selling art there were people selling plushies there were people selling um toys even so you know some of the old action figures and so on and so forth um both consoles and games uh there was a guy who was selling um yeah like knitted plushies as well so lots of varieties of, of bits and pieces there for you to look as you go around and uh, yeah really 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 nice um, i did get to meet one person who i have been watching on the tubes for some time and that's ed hunt uh, and i'll stick his channel below uh, i believe it's ed hunts uh, as in you know always looking uh, out there on the hunt uh, and he is a bit of a local boy for me i think i don't think he lives too far away from where i live in the southeast of england um, but i know he definitely frequents uh, the various boot fairs and around that my area and does very well out of them a lot better than i'll do so, so let's, let's put it that way uh, i've pretty much given up on uh, boot fair hunting and things like that because i just can't one super early mornings and also the 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 fights to get into people with boots of their cars it's not for me at all so uh, uh but i know ed does really well and on his channel he does a lot of pickup videos and boot fair you know actually filming at boot fairs or charity shop hunting those sorts of things and and then flips them for profit and then buys games that he wants to get for his collection so uh, yeah absolutely go and check out ed um and he was running a stall there so on his store he was selling some of the stuff he's obviously picked up uh, but he was also doing uh, these lucky bags so i should come back to this in a minute um but this is essentially he has three tiers of bag i think i think it was 10 15 and maybe 30 pound um for these bags and they are blind buy bags so i have no idea what's in that um, but we shall have a look in the end we're gonna make you wait to the end for that so what else did I pick up whilst I was there? Well, actually saw some Commodore 16 stuff, which you very rarely see at these things. Uh, and it's two games. I could only find two in the whole box, and it just so happened it was two that I was actually looking for. Um, so you may or may not know, 
But I recently got a Commodore 16 into the collection, into my Commodore corner over there, and uh, I've been collecting the Mastertronics games, the 199 range, uh, because these are the games that, for me, are the most nostalgic for the system. Uh, and there was two that I don't quite have, well, I don't have yet, and now I do, uh, and that is these two. So the first pickup I got was um, Spect Spectipede which is a clone of a centipede type game. There are some little bits different in there. Um, I'm afraid I can't show you any artwork on the back, um, but uh, it's got some cool, some cool artwork on the front there. Bit scratched up. I will probably change the case. Uh, the cases were a bit kicked about in the box. Um, little scratch in there, but you can still buy, believe it or not, brand new cassette cases. So I'm going to get some of those and uh, and put it in a, in a nice new cassette case. Uh, and the second one was a Big Mac, the Mad Maintenance Man. It's a really long title. The More Adventures of Big Mac and the Mad Maintenance Man. And this is more like a sort of. How do I describe it? A precision platform jumping game. You know, that you're trying to get from the start of the level to the end of the or the exit. It's all on one screen, and you've got to navigate your way around the level, jumping bad guys. You don't have an attack, I don't believe. It is all about precision jumping and dodging and, and getting through the level. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the two Commodore 16 games, and they were super cheap. I mean, the guy, he just asked for a fiver for both, so £2.50 each for both of those. Um, you cannot go wrong. Uh, next up, I was looking loose carts, right? I always pick up loose carts uh, whenever I see them of games that I fancy playing. Uh, and this time I picked up two um, Nintendo, so NES carts. Uh, the first one is called Captain Skyhawk. And both of these, I'm going to show you, were a fiver. So Captain Skyhawk for a fiver. Um, really nice, actually. Quite a clean looking cart. Like, no issues on the back. It's got three screws. I'm sure that's important for somebody. Um, <laughs> it's certainly not the, uh, I think the old carts, were they five screws or something? Um, but certainly, yeah, nice, 1985. Um, yeah, uh, and it's, um, how do I describe it? It is, I want to say isometric shoot em up, but it actually does change from an isometric view to also almost like an afterburner view. So uh, there are levels that, that slightly change around, but it looks really cool. And uh, from what I've seen, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to look forward to playing that. Uh, and then the next one up was Solar Jetman. Another five pound game. Bit of a shame. There's some. Uh, I don't know if that will clean off, uh, but there's some scuffing on the on the side there. But I'm not. I'm not that fussed. It's not something I worry too much about. I will use the old magic sponge on there. But to be honest, it feels quite smooth. I think maybe someone was a little bit overzealous with a magic sponge because it looks like there might have been some writing on there, and they've tried to get rid of the writing um, with something that's probably caused more damage than uh, than the writing did in the first place. Uh, uh, but yeah, so the Jetman, a nice kind of another little shooter with thrust type mechanics. So you're you're trying to keep your ship going by picking up fuel and and, and other bits and pieces, uh, and you've got those kind of momentum based graphics where you're using your thrust to keep yourself moving, but also you know you've got swing and you've got momentum to try and battle against and gravity and things like that so uh, yeah another cool little game um that i'll enjoy playing called solar jetman and it's <laughs> another one with a long old title the full title is solar jetman hunt for the golden warship there we go right and then before we jump into the blind bag the last pickup was a bit of a everyone always says grails but actually this was the one big game i was after on the Sega Saturn. So I am really glad that I picked up. I've seen it before and it's a very pricey game. Uh, and this is the first time I've seen it for well under what it goes for online, uh, significantly under. Uh, and I even managed to, to haggle it down a little bit. Um, so yeah, this is on the Sega Saturn. Drum roll, please. It is Die Hard Arcade. And this is a game I have been after for some time because uh, in the arcade, it was fantastic. And I love to be able to bring that arcade home. So, uh, yeah, this is what we've done by getting Die Hard Arcade. Um, very different to the Die Hard Trilogy game, um, which has you know th basically three types of gaming. This is, as you can see from the pictures, almost like... Um, 
uh, sort of an adventure beat em up um, with weapons and just cool cool stuff going on played this a lot back in the day uh, and when i got the sega saturn there was a couple of games i really wanted to get obviously a big one was sega rally um, because that is to me the closest representation of the arcade that version uh, and this was another big one that i wanted to get so really happy that i can now get this in a nice um protector uh and uh yeah look after this game because i'm really going to enjoy playing this i hopefully might even get it on today so uh yeah die hard arcade really happy really really happy to add this to the collection right so let's break into this bag shall we let's move some stuff out of the way clear ourselves some space i have no idea what's in here literally not a clue uh so as you can see it is still sealed uh it's got a 15 pound uh, mark on it uh just because i happen to have that um spare in cash and i thought hey why not let's uh support ed and what he's doing um i always like to try and do that if someone's out there trying to do something they're passionate about you know be that the retro realm with uh, scott and his shop be that um alex arcade archive with his art with his with his arcade or rmc neil the cave with the, with the cave anyone who's in the hobby to do something more than just the youtube stuff and try and actually create a, a a life for themselves in this then i'd love i'm very happy to support uh, so when i saw that he was selling some bits i definitely wanted to buy something from him um and i thought maybe the best way to go was to get the blind bag so let's see so i'm going to open it up and start from from the top really uh we're gonna get a load of microphone noise sorry about that okay right first off we have a game called on the ps3 i think i actually own this on the ps3 what i may do is uh maybe i'll try and keep a total of what these games potentially sell for um but as you can see this is enslaved on the ps3 now i actually believe this is actually supposed to be a pretty good game uh, it's got the manual but yeah enslaved on the ps3 i can already see the next game is a ps3 game as well so let's have a look we have got pez 2011 on the ps3 i'm not gonna lie this one's probably a 50p game um but uh, i actually don't have pez 2011 on the ps3 so for funsies maybe we'll keep it in the collection um next up we actually have wow we have a n64 game in a box which is bad news for me because i don't keep any uh cardboard boxes so if anyone's after a box for this game let me get it out of this packet so this is on the n64 nintendo cardboard and it is turok 2 on the n64 now i don't believe i own turok 2 if i look inside there is definitely a cartridge in there yeah there's the cartridge uh, it does say no manual so it has the nintendo manual but no Turok manual. But there we go. Is a N64 game. Um, Turok 2 on the N64. And actually some some cardboard. That I'm sure I will know someone who will make use of that. Because uh, it's not for me. Uh, I'll happily keep the cartridge. But if anyone needs <laughs> the box. Let me know. Right next up we've got Just Cause 2. On the Xbox 360. The Just Cause games are great fun. I think I already own this on the Xbox. Um, but yeah, Xbox. Ah, now this is a great game. Now, I do own this. Uh, but that doesn't stop it from being an amazing game. Uh, and it's up there, as far as I'm concerned, with the best of the series. And that is Assassin's Creed 2. If you're going to play an Assassin's Creed game, in my opinion... <laughs> I know there's been a lot of them since. Um, but for me this is right up there with one of the best Assassin's creed games i've played uh the whole Ezio series and obviously following this i think it was brotherhood i'd probably put brotherhood above F um episode um assassin's creed 2 uh, but great game great game um and it's uh yeah excellent one to pick up oh and next up this is the last oh no there's something else in there uh we have got on the playstation 2 a game that i don't own on the playstation 2 and that is fifa street 2 so i have no idea um you know i always think sports games are probably rubbish but who knows uh and then we've got some other little surprises in here as well so the last game and then there's something else the last game which i'm actually really happy about 
only because it's a loose cart and i love loose carts and it's one i don't have so i'm definitely going to be keeping it and trying it out and it is play action football on the game boy and football in the american style so american football so that's cool hey i'll keep that uh, and then <laughs> i should be giving these to my uh, son uh, there is a bunch of little little uh, leaflet here uh, or a little sleeve with some pokemon cards in there so let's have a quick look in case anyone knows what these are uh, professor research there we go We're getting a great uh zoom in on that are we there we go it's a shiny must be good uh <laughs> this one's called a love disc there we go there we go love disc uh we've got an oh, man how do you even pronounce that neo Ufa, neo <laughs> no <laughs> i don't know how to pronounce that uh someone can phonetically type it out on the, in the comments below uh, <laughs> i've got one of these in the lost in in the lodge there you go that's a little um lost vacuum I've got a little handy handy vacuum and uh and the phalanx there we go so a bunch of little pokemon cards of which i should give to my boys um i'm not sure i know at one point one of them was collecting them but uh that should go to them so that was what was in the surprise it's empty look there we go that's all gone uh so let me just recap it for you remember this was 15 quid so i have no idea what the value is and maybe i'm now sticking it on the screen somewhere i may not because maybe it's not worth knowing um sometimes it's just the fun of it right so you're just supporting someone but uh got turk turk 2 box and cartridge that's gotta be worth a few quid surely uh football on a game boy fifa street 2 assassin's creed 2 just cause two there's a lot of twos uh pez 2011 uh and enslaved so what's that yeah six games no more than six games three six seven games in that little bag there we go so there we go if you like that then uh next time you see ed hunts at one of these expos of which i know he's planning to do a lot more uh maybe you'll jump in on one of his lucky bags and, and see what you can get so that's the video highly recommend it you know brighton gaming market whilst it was small really good quality there some great games uh and yeah if you if you're about that way it's worth checking out it was a lovely sunny day as well we went to the beach afterwards here's a little scene And it was lovely and so uh yeah go check it out thanks so much for watching and uh, if you like the video hit the like if you're not subscribed hit subscribe and i'll see you soon on the next one all right thanks very much bye bye